Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your presence and power. We realize this is a new day and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Lord, bless us at this preaching moment that hearts might be lifted, that lives might be inspired, that we might be rejuvenated to go and do more for you, to be greater and special in places where you plant our feet, in spaces where you allow us to occupy. Speak to me now, Lord, then speak through me, and we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, the Christ we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. How blessed we are. We're in the Gospel of John all month, and possibly next month also the Gospel of, of John. The Church Without Walls, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Pastor Keith McGee. Thank you so much for joining us week after week. We praise God for being in your home, your living room. There's a chat space that you have. Why don't you just say good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Or, Hello, how you doing? Or just say amen. And that all of those who have joined us near and far might be blessed. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very much. Do a nice little hand clap in your uh, note section for the musicians. Just a little hand clap. Just a little, just, just a little <laughs> praise moment for them. Just you can come on here, please. Uh, they share their tremendous gifts week after week and we give God praise. Next week, next week, I'm going to ask the, the sound engineer to come down where you can see him. Not, not today. I'm going to ask him uh, next week. I'll, I'll, give him, I'll give him two days and for you to see also some of the multimedia people who are blessing us. Now the Gospel of John, chapter 5. You'll see these words. I'm reading King James Versions. Version verses 1 through 9. After this, there was the feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is the Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay great multitude of impotent folk, blind, half withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatever diseases he had. Verse 5, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Come on, say 38. 30, 30, 38, not 38 days, not 38 minutes, not 38 months, but 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had and now a long time in this case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day, was, was the Sabbath. Immediately, uh, Jesus says, do you want things to get better? What's your destination? He said, yes, I do, but I have a challenge. I need somebody to help me out. I want you this morning, this phrase, claim your, claim your destiny. Claim, claim your, claim your destiny. Not mine, but claim, but claim your, your destiny. The Gospel of John, I share it each week, it's good news. There are four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and and John, we started on this journey, uh, week one in chapter two, at a wedding feast where Jesus happened to come and bring company and his mother intervened when there was a crisis to say, don't worry about the wine, my son is Jesus. And sometimes in your life when people have trouble and storms, you ought to look at them and say, don't worry about it, Jesus has you covered. You ought to sing that song. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing it word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sometimes you ought to just introduce them to Jesus. And then uh, week two, we ran into Nicodemus, who was, uh, who was powerful, influential, and informative maybe, but he knew he needed to be saved. And so we said there ought to be some things that resemble when you've been born again. You, you ought to act a little different. You, you ought to respond a, a little bit different. Your, your vocabulary ought to, to, to be different. Uh, I don't know if I've told you or not. Can I pause for a moment and tell you about the kid that went to church with his grandmother? And 
He heard the preacher preaching about how good God was and praise God and praise God and what God ought to do. But the preacher uh, was a preacher who was bivocational. He also was a carpenter. And so when the service was over, everybody was celebrating the preacher, but the little boy was not celebrating. He was just watching. You know, children, we'll watch what you do, and they don't care what you say. They watch what you do. So he followed the preacher on Monday, and the preacher was hammering on and moving and doing carpentry work. And the preacher says, can I help you? He said, no, I'm good. A few hours later, he had his lunch. Preacher, can I help you? No, no, I'm good. He said, well, you've been here half of the day. I'm what is it that you want? He said, I heard you yesterday, but I really want to know what are you going to say when you hit your hand with that hammer? <laughs> and, and sometimes people want to want to see a sermon more than they want to hear one. And so when, when I mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, does your life reflect the fact that you've been born again? Oh, and then last week there was a woman at a well. Come on, say woman at a well. A woman at a, at a well who, who meets Jesus. And when she meets Jesus, uh, there was a conversation about H2O, that kind of water, but as the conversation continues, as the conversation moves forward, it gets deeper, and Jesus uh, says to her, I got a different kind of water. She says to him, you know, you really probably shouldn't, wouldn't be talking to me. And he says, don't worry about it. If you really knew who I was, you'd already been talking to me anyway. Jesus uncovers those things that perhaps had kept her from being who she was, and invited her to have the living water. And so last week, I heard you, Shantia, we, 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 we said that in the midst of her celebrating, in the midst of her celebrating her due day, number one, she had unconditional acceptance. Jesus knew. He knew about the past husbands. He knew the person that was at the house wasn't her, but he didn't hold it uh, against her. I'm so glad that he doesn't hold anything against us. I'm glad as a holistic eraser that no matter where I've been, what I've done, and what I've said, and who I've been around, Jesus wipes the slate clean. Every morning I just talk to him and clean slate. Number two, we said he gave her the gift of never thirsting again. It was a new day. She was not going to thirst anymore. Yeah, she was going to get a bottle of water every now and then, but her soul was going to be full every day. And finally, she went from having all those husbands, someone living with her and not being hers, to being an evangelist, telling everybody to come see a man. And so I want you to remember from last week, while you're celebrating your new day, remember to tell some people to come and come and, and, and see a man. Come see a man who can change your life. Uh, can I pause that for a moment? I have to preach fast, but can I pause it for a moment? Pastor Kenneth T. Whaler in the Memphis, Tennessee community, who passed a long time, a legend. Pastor Kenneth T. Whaler Sr., a legend. He told this story once. Maybe I'll to share it with you about inviting other people. He said there was a man who, who didn't necessarily care for dogs. He didn't want a pet. He was not a pet person. And he comes home one day. He stayed by himself and there's a dog. And he tells the dog, get away. The dog does not move. He tells the dog to get away. The dog does not move. And finally, he gives in and realizes the dog is injured. He's got a leg that needs a little uh, nurturing and taking care of it. So he brings the dog in. He said, just one night. And you know, one day when you're taking care of a straight pet, turns into two days and two weeks for long. Christmas and Easter and Fourth of July and Thanksgiving. And next Christmas, you got the dog in a little sweater. And got a little head on it. The Christmas after that, you got a Christmas card and you got his picture on it. Look at look 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 at my dog Joe or John or whatever you call him. You got a dog and and, and so he and the dog had 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 bonded and and he loved his dog. He told people about his dog, but he came home one day and the dog was gone. And, and the man was heartbroken because he had given in to the dog and the dog had left. And, and, and he, he, he said, he, he said these words, I don't ever want a dog again. I don't ever want a dog again. I don't ever want a dog again. And so he put all the dog stuff in the garage and he decided he was just going to be sold. Next Christmas, his car had only his face on it again. And one day, he looked out and he heard, heard some scratching on the door. And, and he heard some scratching on the door. He heard some scratching on the door. And when he heard the scratching, he, he, he looked out and, and he came out. He was going to uh, he was going to fuss at the dog. And when he said, why? He looked up and noticed that that dog had brought another dog who had an injured leg to him. And he was, he was kind of doing his head. When you've been born again, when God does something good for you, you don't keep it for yourself. You go out and you bring something, somebody else in that they might have some. He was saying in a way, thank you for taking care of me, but now will you take care of my friend? 
uh, she kept saying, come see a man who knows about us. Well, this morning, give me, give me about 12 minutes and I'll finish. This morning, we're still in the Gospel of John. Jesus is moving around and there is this pool uh, that we refer to it uh, about Bethesda in the area, the sheep market, the pool. And there was a man there who's been there 38 years. And, and we talked about claiming your destiny. And, and I want to suggest to you that, that, that no one can live your future for you but you. I want to also say to you to, to make sure that you're asking God each day, can I just stay here for a moment? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that you're moving into trusting the Lord with all thine heart and lean not your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him, that, that you're asking God, what would you have me to do? That you're saying, God, show me my path. Every Christian has a destination without the privilege of thinking about it a different way. God has a place for you. Claim your destiny. This man kept coming. He he kept coming day after day. And sometimes we need not complain. We need not get frustrated. We ought to just claim our destiny. Stay with me for a moment. Jesus then talks to him and, and asked him the question. Uh, it's a clear question. It probably is written in your Bible. Do you? Do you? Will? 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 Will thou be made whole? Is your destiny to stay here by the pool? Is your destiny to move somewhere else? I'm suggesting to you that sometimes we stay by the pool too long. That we're waiting on someone to help us. We're waiting on some person. We're waiting on a human being with normally would have two feet and a couple of hands. We're, we're waiting on somebody just like us to make a difference. The difference in our life is not who we are. It's not who we know, where we go, where we've been, or what we've learned. The difference in our world is how awesome Jesus is. And so we have to remember to tap in to the power source. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. When, when, when I was a kid and, and I would go a uh, child, I would go shopping or be in the store with my parents. I, I never went to somebody else's parents to see what they buy my candy. I, I never asked my friend's mama, can you get me, I'm, I'm dating myself now, some lemon heads, uh, uh, some now ladies, some sweet tarts. I know you've never heard of that. I, I, I never asked them to bless me. I asked the person who was responsible for me to bless me. We belong to God. God loves us. And so Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Well, Pastor, how do we claim my destiny? Stay with me for a moment. Number one, plan for your destiny. If you think you are going to be a tree trimmer or a tree cutter, you need to begin to ask. You, you need to begin to ask sharper. You need a tree grinder. You need the right equipment. You think you're going to be a ballet, ballet dancer? You need to not wear uh, Nike and Jordans or other brands. You need to get you some of those cute little shoes. Y'all know you need to get you one of the little outfits and, or, or whatever outfits you want to wear and get busy. We ought to look like what we are about. Back when I was a kid, I started working cutting grass between 10 and 16. I knew that if I really wanted to be effective, I needed a lawnmower, uh, a weed eater, uh, a broom, and some hair strippers, even if they were rusty. As long as they would uh, whittle down what it was, I could get started. I got my equipment. I got a lawnmower. I, I, I need to tell you, I got a lawnmower. It had an engine, a motor, but it did not have self propel and so you had to push. But I was ready, and so you need to plan for your destiny. What are you trying to be? Where are you trying to go? Oh, I would play the drums if I only had a good drum set. No, you just need two sticks and a garbage cart and ambition. And you just need a place to beat it up and down. You know, I would, I would, I would, you know, I would shoot basketball if, no, you know how many stars started off shooting uh, in crates on the pole? You just need to want to do it and plan for it. Well, I mentioned entertainment, I mentioned sports. Let me also mention academically, if you're trying to learn, we never get too old to learn something new. We never get too far that we cannot grasp something good. Plan for your destiny. What's God calling you to do? How does God want you to move? Unlike uh, some people, I, I'm going to keep working as long as I can. As long as I can preach, I'll be preaching because that's what he's called me to do. I love doing it. I can preach every day. I plan it. I can't wait to get here. I can't wait to see you all. I know y'all waving at me. I'm waving back at you. Plan. Plan for your destiny. Number two. Number two. Uh, promote your destiny in your spirit. In, in your spirit. You need to be saying every day, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You need to be saying every day, God made me wonderful. I'm a special creation. You need to get up in the morning talking about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. They said once a man went to the bank and 
He didn't have but maybe a hundred dollars, and he opened an account and he wrote his name and put Ed Company by his name. And the people looked at him strange because it was nobody there but him. And what kind of company you have when you only have a hundred dollars? He says, It'll be what I have spoken it to be. And some years later, guess what? He had people working for him and more people working for him. What do you want him to do? If you plan on competing with some people who are doing major things, tell them they better get it together because you're on your way. If you plan on being the best, you better tell them to. Get it together because you're on your way. If you're planning on starting your own cable television station, you better tell other people to get it together. Look out, ESPN. Here I come. Look out, NBC. Look out, CBS. Look out, ABC. Look out, CNN. Here I come. You have to promote your destiny. Look at what qualities and characteristics God has, has given you. And don't wait on somebody else to tell you how good you are. Don't wait on someone else to tell you you can accomplish your goal. Promote your destiny. Daily affirmations. Get up in the morning talking about how you're going to do it. Get up in the morning talking about what's good. I, I injured my foot, actually both feet recently. And I never said they were not going to get better. I always said I can't wait till I run again. Next week, I might not be running, but I'll be walking. Give me a couple of weeks, and I'll be there. I didn't wait on someone to tell me it was all right. I talked to God, and God said, all right, you can do it. And on my way, I am. Promote your destiny. Number one, plan for your destiny. Number two, promote your destiny. And number three, push forward regardless, regardless of opposition. I'm sure when Jesus is talking to this man, someone's telling him, get out the way. I'm sure year after year, somebody was telling him, you can't do it. Can I say this to you? When God's hand is on your life, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard or has it entered into the heart of man what God can do through you. Tell our kindergarten students they can grow up and be amazing. Tell our students in elementary and middle school and high school they can do amazing things. Tell those children that they can soar and they don't have to be like anybody else. God has a pattern, a plan, and a place that they can be successful. Tell our senior citizens, too, we still love them and we want to make sure that even in their seasoned years, we take advantage of their wisdom, but also realize they still have talent. My mother is 81 years old. She'll be 82 real soon, and uh, she may not even hear this today, so you'll have to tell her what I said about her. She probably has the best cursing handwriting of anyone I know. She's 81 years old. She can write a whole letter in cursive. If people knew where my mother was, they probably would pay her to teach a few generations how to write. My mother, hey mom, just in case you get the message, she can write a whole letter in cursive. Don't you know somebody told her, you don't need cursive anymore. You can just print. You don't need cursive writing. My mom can write. And if she had listened to them, she would have given up her gift. No. She's not a Harvard graduate. No, she's not a UT Knox graduate, not Dartmouth, not Brown, not Yale. But there's some people there who can't write cursing, and my mama can. <laughs> and so when God blesses you with your skills and your gifts, plan for your destiny. Promote your destiny in your, in your spirit. Start telling yourself, I'm, I'm special. There was a poster on the wall I like talking about where it was a little boy. He looked up and said, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no jump. Every day you get up, plan for your future, promote your destiny in your spirit, and then push forward regardless of what other people say about it. Don't, don't let other people define who you are. Don't let anybody tell you what you cannot do. God has made you unique and special. The Bible says that Jesus asked the question, will thou be made whole? In other words, he said, is your destiny to get better or do you want to stay here? The man spoke up, and sometimes he asked us what's our destiny, and we start explaining and complaining about what we cannot do. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He says, I want to walk, but nobody there. Jesus didn't ask no more questions. He just told him to get up from where he is. And when Jesus says to get up, something happens. Read your Bibles immediately. The, the man was made whole. When you connect yourself with God, when you connect yourself with the power of Jesus the Christ, things happen. Bible says immediately he was made whole and took up his bed and walked. When you claim your destiny, your health can improve. Your job market opportunities can get better. When you claim your destiny, that money that you thought would not pay has a way of stretching the way you need it. 
family life, spiritual walk gets better. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man immediately got up and was whole, and then he walked. And all the people said amen. amen. People said amen again. Amen. I'm finished. There, 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 there was a young man born in Arkham, Butler, Mississippi, and he had speech challenges, and um, he stuttered, and you know, when, when you stutter, sometimes people limit you by what they think you can do. They limit you by what they think you can do. They limit you. They leave you by the pool, or they leave you in your desk, or they leave you in your cubicle, or they leave you out on the Snapchat, or the group text. They, they leave you out because you're limited. Uh, but a good thing that he had a teacher, and he liked poetry. But the good thing they, they didn't leave him out because uh, or when they let him out, they let him back in. A good thing he didn't stop pushing, should I say. You know why? Because uh, his last name is Jones, his first name is James, and his middle name is Earl. In case you don't know who he is, he stuck as a child, but because a teacher worked with him, at 89 years old, he has been Mufasa and has one of the best voices on earth. When people tell you what you cannot do, you look at them and say, appreciate your opinion and move on to something else. If James Earl Jones had listened at 10 and 11, some 80 years or so, 70 years of us appreciating his voice never would have happened. Right now, he's 89 years old. There's no voice like his on earth. One more 